You know, from the beginning of the end of age, the Bible says that man disobeyed God by listening to the voice of his wife, who actually listened to the voice of the devil. And so man lost dominion and the mandate God has given to him. And from that day, the Bible says that um, when God asked man, why did you disobey me? He said that the woman you gave me caused me to sin. And then God began to spell out various kinds of punishment for each of them. So he said to the woman that you will have um, double your labor pay. Do we understand that? So it simply means by the mathematics of heaven, from the originality of time, a woman is actually supposed to give birth at three months. Some other time. Is that okay? Is that okay? You know why sometimes we go into this histological um, part of scripture, all right? You know, we have the, the scriptures are full of events, historical, archaeological, and the rest of them. So if you try to carry this perspective of scripture, it will help you to have an understanding of what the Bible is talking about. Do we understand that? So we, we started from Gen Genesis and then we find out that the Bible said for the man that you will till the ground. And then he gave a prophetic word to the woman. He said that your seed will bruise the head of the serpent. So it simply means that what we should be expecting to take over the dominion mandate that man lost from the seed of the woman. However, every one of us sitting here in this building is a produce of the seed of what? The man. Do we understand that? So it was a confusion for the devil to begin. That's why from the beginning, the devil began to fight women. Do we understand that? Every, we don't have manism. It's feminism now you have. Everything on the earth, every kind of wala will be steered up by women. When the devil wants to bring something stupid and foolish, he looks for women to actualize them. That's why you see, now let me tell you the reason why. You see, you will divert my message. The reason why is because man, the Bible says, and God saw that it was not good for man to be what alone. So he decided to create what a woman. The Bible said that he put man into a deep sleep. Simply mean that the Bible, um, what the Bible was trying to talk about was that God ministered to man and he got slain under the spirit. Which is what we see happening in service. But you know, the Bible writer couldn't really comprehend what was taking place there. So he said that God put man into a deep sleep. D do we understand what I'm saying? So when you see people getting slain in the spirit, they actually get into deep sleep where certain spiritual, surgical operations take place in their life. Not because they just want to fall and fall down for, for nothing's sake. Do we understand that? Are we following, please? And then the Bible says that God said, let me, let, us, let me create a woman. So a woman is a man with a womb. That's why, you see, the devil finds out that there is no need disturbing the man. He knows when I go to the man, even if I get the man and the woman choose not to be in alignment with that man, I won't still be able to get the man down. Because when you are created, when a new version comes, it should be an improvement of the old. So it simply means that an, a woman is the improvement of a man. So he knows if I go to the lower version, if I deceive Adam, when Adam takes it to his improved version, it can still be counteracted. So the first thing to target is the improved version of the man. Do we understand what I'm saying? And so if I can get the improved version, then the lower version before that is taken care of. So he was able to get the woman. Because if you can get the stronger version, the lesser version is nothing to write him about. Do you understand that? And his target, why he went that way was because, you see, there are two gateways to bring life to this earth. One, via the spiritual realm and via the womb of a human. Do we understand that? That's why women are targets. And then because of the emotional state of a woman, they have easy affinity to the spiritual atmosphere. That's why you see when we begin to minister the power of God here now, you see women get more slain. Do we understand that? Because they have closer words, affinity to the spiritual atmosphere. So the Bible says, and the one day God wanted to check in Genesis whether 
this mandate I want to carry out is going to be fulfilled. So he told Abraham, after waiting for almost 25 years, that's after the promise, he said, pick your only son and go sacrifice the son. Is that not so? Is that not so? The Bible says, and then Abraham was so smart this time around, refusing to tell Sarai. Because it takes a, a mad woman to agree after going through the waiting period of 25 years and the stress of nine months that they should carry the child. You have to explain to her the kind of God that was talking to you. Do you understand that? Whether you heard him from the earth or the heavens. And so he decided to do that secretly. The Bible says, and he went with two of his, give me Genesis 22, I think. He went with two of his maid, maidens, or, or, or of his servant rather. And while they journeyed to Mount Moria, I'm taking us through memory lane. They journeyed to Mount Moria, right? And when they were about to climb to Mount Moria, he told the two servants, he said, wait here. I and the Lord will go and we will come back again. Listen. Are we following? Get me that exact verse. I and the Lord will go and what will happen? We will come back again. So it simply means that your offering is never forgotten. It actually comes back. Follow me. Now, the Bible says that the two, the two servants stayed beneath the Mount Moria and Abraham went back, went to the mountain with Isaac. Now, what happened to Jesus? Jesus came together to, at his death, walked with two men on his way to Miles. Right? Are we following, please? And after three days' journey, just like it was for Abraham, he had to come back. So I'm making us understand that every agenda of scripture from Genesis, Exodus, like that, even in Genesis, look at what the Bible says. And sometimes Joseph was in the prison. He was sold for 30 shekels of silver. Jesus was sold for 30 shekels of silver. He was kept in the pit, right? Right? And Jesus was kept in the pit. Now the Bible says that he, he, he was in the prison with two men again. One of them was the butler which served what? Wine. And one of them was the baker, which deals with what? Bread. They had both, they both had dreams. And he said to the butler, you will be restored. And then he said to the baker, you will be what? Killed. When he tried to interpret their dreams. Is that not so? So you see Jesus coming at the night of his death, saying, this is my body to be broken. Then this is my blood. Drink it. Are we following what I'm saying? I'm just drawing the line to make us understand that everything from Genesis to revelation till the cross was all about that one man Jesus so he was he came as a man with a mission that's my sermon he came as a man with a mission do we understand that but there was something that helped him to fulfill his mission and that's what I want to talk about something helped him to fulfill his mission and that's where we have problems in the body of Christ the Bible says once we give our life to Christ, we have been baptized into Christ. Right? So we are now into Christ. Now listen, the into Christ gives us the privilege of entrance. Look at what the Bible says. Give me John chapter 3 from verse 3. The Bible says, except a man be born again, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. John asked Nicodemus, asked the question again. And Jesus said to him, except a man being born again, he cannot see the first entrance talks about being born again to have access to God's kingdom. The second time he repeated the word, not enter the kingdom. He now said see simply means to experience what the kingdom now looks like. So it's one thing to get into the kingdom. is another thing to have an experiential reality of what happens within where the kingdom. So when you get baptized or born into Christ that you are into Christ, you are born again, you have entrance. But there is something the Bible tells us about in Colossians 1 27. It says, for Christ in us, not Christ, not we in Christ. It is Christ in us that is the hope of glory. Give me John, Judges chapter 15. I just want to give us something to pant about in this season and say, Lord, this is why you died. Give me your fire. Do we understand that? Judges 15 tells us a story from verse 1 of how Samson went to his father-in-law and said, please give me the privilege. I want to go see my wife. Let me get into her room. And the father-in-law said to Samson, he said, Samson, I've given your wife to one of your brethren. And Samson got so mad. And that's how it is. 
Now Jesus who has been, has been killed, Jesus is dead. But then, you know, God is looking down from heaven and seeing those he died for still living wayward and useless life. Do we understand that? And Samson became mad, mad and angry. The Bible said, then he go, God gets two fox. He gathered foxes to himself, then he tied their tail two by two. Do we understand that? Do we understand that? Then he went to the harvest field of the Philistines. Then he set each of those foxes where? What? On fire. Then he sent them into the field. Now listen. Do you know as the foxes went into the harvest field of the Philistines, how will Samson know that a fox is in a location when he sees the kind of explosion taking place there? Imagine if Samson had just tied the tail of those oxes and sent them into the harvest field without setting them on fire. Give me Luke chapter 10. Give me Luke 9, 1. The Bible says, and he called his disciples. Verse 2. He gave them power over unclean spirit. He said to them, go cleanse the leper. Heal the sick. He gave them power. Give me Luke chapter 10. Now tells us what happened in Judges 15. That he also called 70. Though Samson was 300, but here we are seeing 70. However, he got them two by two and put them on fire little wonder he told them at his departure he said do not attempt to do anything for me you will struggle except you be endued with power from on high that's the prayer I want us to pray Lord the fire of the Holy Spirit the fire of the Holy Spirit listen as we have encountered God, we have encountered Christ. We hold the world and encounter with this God. The fire, that's the prayer I want us to pray from this meeting. Let the death of Christ not be a waste over my life. The fire of your spirit. This has been my pounding for years. Else you will tell stories to your generation. The fire. He said, I came to set the world on fire. He came to repeat what Samson did. He said, I wish it was already burning. I came to set the world on fire. Wherever the foxes went, there were explosions in that place. There are things that should not happen because you are in the church. There are kind of things that should not happen because you are part of a family. in Jesus name listen we are in a generation of great eloquence a generation who has settled for mere speech mere statements we are in such kind of a generation who gets so easily satisfied I had to download about 20 different messages of certain great fathers some late and some alive plain statement I just want to find out how did they get the anointing how and I began to listen to each of them and I saw the hunger and thirst the hunger and thirst the hunger and thirst the hunger and thirst what's your passion he was a man with a mission he came for and he stood the mission what's your mission what's your mission what we need after this service is the fire of the Holy Spirit again. That men, that's why we, we, the theme of the conference is lighting my candle. The Bible says the spirit of a man is the candle of God. Light set fire on my spirit again. Set fire on my spirit. Let that passion and love for God, that passion to do great things for this God, let it burn again in the inside of me. That's how most of us started, but the cares of this life has suffocated it. Do we understand that? 
So we didn't just come to see Jesus die. That's why you see they keep playing the short clips to look at it and say, wait, did he die for nothing? Why traveling down this afternoon to me? All I was praying in the car is that Lord, let my generation know that you have a fox on fire. Where I go, let's men. The Bible speaking in John 3.35 of John. He said he was a burning and a shining light. You should not be known as a talkative. When you hear your voice, they say, hey, that is brother so, so, so there. No. Every, he was a burning and a shining. Anywhere he stepped as a burning light, men feel the heat. They know a different breed is in that atmosphere. Your presence should be so felt that your absence will be noticed. That's what I said I want to teach you us last week Sunday on the power of an influencing presence. Power of an influencing presence. It's one thing to carry him. It's one thing to carry a presence that is influencing. A presence that is like a cloud. When you come to a place, once I am fasting, those that stay around me, give them one day, 24 hours, all of them will tell you they want to go on retreat. The presence will begin to drop on them. Do we understand that? Lord, the fire of your spirit. The fire of your spirit. The fire of your spirit. Let my generation enjoy my existence. Let hell bleed my existence. The fire of your spirit. Christ in me is the hope of this generation. Ah. No, 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 no. Christ in me. That woman that is buried is my question to answer. That blind eyes I still encounter is my job. That, yes, that dumb mouth, that lame feet, that cancer, I am the solution. We don't just sing, we are the presence of God. Let your fire. Can you raise your voice and pray to Give me two scripture and I'm done. And you are here, you are here, you are here, you are here. Give me Isaiah 53 10. Isaiah 53 10. The Bible says, Ye are my witness. Isaiah 53 10. Yet it pleased the Lord. It was his joy to make him go through all with the water. He had put him to grief when thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin. He shall see his seeds prolong his days. Ah, did you hear that? He shall see. See, listen. The act of the apostles is not the title of a book. It was named so because of what men started to do. Such that it was credible enough for it to be recorded as a book in the Bible. What will be your own act? Live with a mission of impact. We live with a sense of purpose. By the time your time on this earth is wrapping up, what will men say of you? Only remember, only remember, only remember by what we have done. Toss will we part from the earth and its toiling. Only remember by what we have done. What will be said about you? Do we understand that? You wake up this pudding in the inside of you. Let my roommate know that he met someone. Let my classmate know that. See, be known for something impactful. Let your Christianity be resourceful. As I said that on Sunday. Let your Christianity be full of results. Nothing just your bad. Mm -mm. 
let it be full of result. Let it be, let it be seen evidentially that you know God. I told you of three types of knowledge of God, right? The mental knowledge, the revelation knowledge, as powerful as it is, it doesn't end there because it only makes men proud. But what makes men powerful is the experiential knowledge. So they can speak like the disciples of God, our hands have entered. Our eyes have looked upon. We didn't just know faith because the Bible said that the just shall live by faith. We've been put in conditions when the only options we had was to live by faith. We didn't bypass it. So we can truly say we are people of faith. We've been there. Do we understand that? I call for, for us to be sensitive. This is what God said to me. He says, son, I will be placing my anointing on men few years I was in a meeting like this and I sat down in that meeting and I said Lord let the God of the Bible appear to me right in that meeting liquid like rain was I didn't say in a vision was dropping on me right in that meeting I'm telling you how we stepped into realities I can never be scared to pray for this you've seen crazy miracles here it's the least thing of the experiences with this God. Do we understand that? The fire of the Holy Spirit. The fire of the Holy Spirit. The fire of the Holy Spirit. That's what makes your presence powerful. That's what makes your words powerful. Have you not seen a man we walk? They, they, they will bring certain people. I remember those days. They'll say, oh, this person is doing like this. I say, tell him to come and see me. They sit in front of my office. And I say, this, your behavior is bad. I want you to stop it. You can go. Then the person can't do that thing again. You think it was just an empty word? No, it was word backed with fire. The Bible says that grace and truth came through Jesus. The word came through Moses and only the law. But for Jesus, it was grace and the backing. Truth coming with the backing of an ability. Do we understand that? That everything we will do in this meeting tonight will not just end in entertainment. Can we at the end of this service cry? Lord, put your special hand on my life. I read the story of Grace Savant. Dr. Umar Akbar, he said, why I like the anointing of the Holy Ghost is that when you have it, you don't need any man to put you on a salary. It can change lives and those lives change can put you on a salary. He said one time, he told himself, I want, to, I want to build a polytechnic. He has a polytechnic in this country. His wife said, are you mad? It's two people that built polytechnic, not one man. He said he went for a meeting in the U.S. Preaching in a meeting. While he stepped in there, the voice of the Holy Ghost told him. He said, Omar, that oil on your head, it can make these two ladies work and they will build that polytechnic. He said, when he saw it, he said, aha. He told the pastor, he said, these two ladies could work. He said, but they are very wealthy ladies. They enjoy their condition. They are not complaining. He said, please, don't dare embarrass me. You know, I'm not doing all this stupid Pentecostal thing. Why the guy was still there being scared? He just screamed, the power of God. Come upon these legs. And those two ladies jumped up like this. Two of them single-handedly built the polytechnic. There is a fire a blaze in my heart. This world. That you are the only way that truth and life. There is a fire, a blaze in my eye. This world knows that you are the only way to die. Rivers of living water, you are the fountain. Say, Lord, put your fire on my heart. Put your unquenchable fire on my heart. This meeting is an ordination. Some of you will step into that thing you have been praying for five years, ten years. Not all meetings are meetings. Some meetings are encounters. Some meetings are ordinations to push men into realities. Thank you, Holy Spirit. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you.